Good morning. Good morning, Miss Joyce Brewer. Thank you so much. Let me tilt this a little more here. There we go. Let's see if I can adjust this. Oh, man. Uh, that might work a little bit better. Let's see. Well, everybody, good morning. Good, good, thank you all for being on the call this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's another beautiful, bright morning in Mr. Mr. Rogers land. <laughs> well, listen, I want to thank everybody on the call today. Man, you guys, yesterday was a great training. Everything is set up today at 6. So I want to make sure we've got the schedule ready. Don't forget, always, every Monday through Friday, we're, we're still here. Uh, Tuesday, Thursdays, 6 o'clock training, uh, 1 through 8. 6.30, a fast start. And then on Friday, which is not on the schedule, Friday at 6 is called what? Happy, happy hour, ha ask Al, happy hour. And then we have 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock on Saturday, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock on Sunday. And then on Saturday at 6, I do a leadership. And Sunday at 6, we do a product training. So everything's moved to 6. 1, 3, and 6. Okay, there we go. Hey, listen, we got a young lady who's came back. We had Ash come back last week. If you did not catch last week, go to our uh, go to the YouTube channel, Destiny International, and look at Miss uh, Drowsy and Dristle. She did an hour. Man, it was so amazing, so heartwarming, so touching. So I, I really, really, as IBOs, and this is only for IBOs, is go back and look at that. That was a great, great, great one. So instead of watching on TV stuff, you want to just go back and, and educate yourself. You know, some of the best teachers on YouTube, some of the best teachers, I would say, also is on these calls because you're getting educated, educated. And education is so important today, not CNN, consecutive negative news. No, 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 watch that stuff. I was out taking my walk this morning. The first thing the guy said, you know, oh, man, I'm listening to the news. I go, why? Why? That's, that, ugh, that makes you depressed. Hey, listen, we got a great call lined up, as you well know. She's back for part two, and we just love her so much. I sent a, mess, a text out message this morning with a picture of Hawaii on it saying she's going to be our guest speaker. Now, why did I send a picture of Hawaii? Because I need to help uplift people's spirits. I'm not here to talk about that junk out there. I don't even call it the name, whatever it's called. You know why? Because we've been, we, that's our problem. We, let's get some good stuff out, okay? If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. And without further ado, our guest speaker for the day to start our week off with her beautiful smile. Uh, we love her so much. The great Rizzo Vice President from Monterey slash Salinas slash um, uh, uh, Carmel, the great Miss Jocelyn Dristel. Good morning. Good morning. There How you are. You? Can you see me? Absolutely, dear. I can see you in a lovely, beautiful <laughs> space. I see Mr. Brian Baker there. Look at him showing up <laughs> with a blue shirt on like me. Look at I almost match it. Hey, cuz. Well, uh, hey, we're all wearing white. Right. <laughs> yes, it's all yours, young lady. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm grateful to be here this morning. I'm looking at all your your planes behind you. Like I see all kinds of jet. I love it. I love those visuals. <laughs> oh, there it is. Yep. As soon as we can take off, let's do it. <laughs> I love it. Super great. Yeah, I agree with Mr. Thomas that, you know, the news is so depressing. I don't watch it. So that's a good place to start is just to say, turn off the TV. <laughs> Are you, <laughs> what are you doing? Hey, man. <laughs> you're, you're doing this is cracking me up. <laughs> I love it. Um, so I had taken a lot of notes. Like I'm trying to figure out what I'm, I'm really going to talk about here. I'm just kind of letting the spirit move me here and what we, we hey, want to talk about. But, um, I think the question to ask, so I don't know if we want to do some Q and A again, cause I think that's great, but, um, I, what are you fighting I you, for? I tell you what, why don't you start off on the subject and then we'll open up a Q and A to you. Cause you always, yeah. you know, Sounds whatever, good. whatever, the, whatever the spirit leads you to, wherever your heart feels like talking about for a couple of minutes and Q and A the rest of it. Perfect. Perfect. Hey, Mr. Well, my, my question to everyone is what are you fighting for? I think that's what to start with is that's what hits me is I think people forget what you're fighting for. Um, you know, I'm not money motivated. I'm freedom motivated. You're standing on your head, Mr. Thomas. Mm -hmm. You're on oh, your head. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Let me turn it back up. You're doing gymnastics. <laughs> I love Let's try it. that. No, you're on your head. Again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> hold on. There you go. 
I was turning it out. I was turning flips in my office. I, I love it because we're doing we're doing uh, virtual gymnastics. It's great. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that at, at the six o'clock Friday uh, happy hour. Turn flips. <laughs> <laughs> hey, laughter is the best medicine, so I appreciate it <laughs> for everyone. So, you know, in talking about what you're fighting for, um, you know, I had to look back at my life and, and see all the, all the obstacles and challenges that I had been through. And I shared my story, um, obviously, last week. And, you know, we all have something to fight for, but I think one of the biggest things that, that stands in our way is our belief system. You know, what we've been, either how we've been raised, or I mean, I was raised in a house uh, where my parents believed in everything that I was doing. Like they, you know, they lifted me up and elevated me. So I'm blessed to have had that. But I was also raised with two brothers who um, caused me to question myself along the way, uh, caused me to, you know, look at my, look at myself and not think that I was worth it. Um, you know, just, just what, you know, especially as a woman, what we, what we do to our heads, but men do the same thing. Cause as I've gone through my, my coaching and, and, um, leading leaders and, and developing leaders, you know, I, the biggest key that stands out to me or biggest thing that stands out to me is their belief system. So, what are your limiting beliefs? That's another question to ask yourself. What is limiting you to getting to the next level? I know that I, you know, we're only human. See, I look at ourselves, I look at myself and I say, you know, what is it going to take me to get to the next level? Um, what is it going to take me? You know, am I, am I moving through my business uh, with Limit, limiting beliefs because to get to the next level, there's a new devil. I think I shared that before. Um, there's always something that's going to stop us, you know, comparing ourselves. I've talked about that before, uh, that comparison piece where we, um, you know, I was just coaching someone the other day and I, um, what I, what I see people do is they lose their tenacity. They lose the, the relentless, uh, because of the world, like, because of the news, because of um, who's surrounding them on a daily basis. When you're at home, you don't necessarily always have the best people around you to lift you up and elevate you. So are you actually picking up the phone and calling someone who can change that mindset that starts to kick in in a moment? Um, you know, I feel like sometimes I get people to a place where I know they can get to the next level and I'm helping them through. And then all of a sudden, you know, the next phone call, I hear some of the same language, some of the same excuses, some of the same, um, uh, instead of speaking life, they're speaking negativity over their lives. And, and, it, and it's, it's just um, evident to me that they're, the way they're stopped in their business is because they keep going back to the old normal. So, you know, my whole goal here is to help you change and shift something that could uh, truly, you know, take you to that next step. And so I think we need to evaluate where we are and where we keep going back to, because I, we have to go forward. This is not going back to a normal. I've mentioned that before too. We got to go to a new normal. We got to create something different to have something different. So when I'm looking at my, my notes here, you know, what is your focus? See where your focus goes, your energy flows. And so, you know, we talked about how you're starting your day. How do you start your day? You know, I know Mr. Thomas and I start our day 100% with God first, right? You know, we, I, I've already fed my soul so I can have a better 24 hours um, and, and be, you know, relentless in my pursuit to what I'm doing. You know, we're sitting here at home and I, and I was with someone yesterday and, you know, I was talking to her about, you know, what she could be doing in this moment. And I hear p people saying things like, well, I don't have all the phone numbers, you know, it's at my office or I don't have this or I don't have that to call people. Like they're, you're creating things that aren't real. Like, are you, are you a problem solver? Are you finding a solution of, of how to get more names, more numbers to make phone calls so that you, because people are waiting for you. 
like what it, what are some avenues that you aren't taking are you instead of spending time on social media searching you know fingering through what people are saying and liking and all these things are you using social media to benefit you like are you getting names and numbers um reaching out to people on messenger see there's a list of people on your on your um, facebook page on your instagram that you can message them directly without their phone number and say hey do you have a minute or here's my number i'd love to talk to you i don't know what what it is but we're limiting being at home and we're missing what is ex what is out there because we have this zoom platform so whether you've you know don't have that list of people or you you've gone through that list and you feel like you're stuck you got to create uh, continue to add to that list and where are you looking are you going on social media linkedin instagram facebook um are you reaching out to people that you that haven't even decided yet and asked for referrals see i i heard a, a training call yesterday where a guy has somebody in his business Okay, so are you going back to the people that are in your business and aren't doing anything and asking, who do you know? I don't know where you're at right now. Um, you know, I would assume you want to renew your position, make sure that you do, but I want to help you build your business. Even if you're not in a position to, who do you know? And get their list because one of the greatest keys in this business is tap rooting. And what they did is this gentleman who hadn't been working, he was afraid actually to pick up the phone and call his mentor, call, call who he was working with because he was um, limiting in his belief that maybe, you know, he wouldn't be heard, you know, he was embarrassed. Um, and so uh, the leader le reached out to him. And he asked, who do you know? And guess what? That person lives in, in California. He, he gave him, you know, my sister who I shared this business before isn't doing very well um, because of the current circumstances. And he reached out to her and the, not, not the, the brother, the leader reached out to her. And now they have a team in New York growing and expanding just in less than seven days because he thought outside of the box. See, we stay in a box where we feel it's comfortable and we don't get outside of a box where the magic always lies. So you have to go beyond. It is not about who's on your list. It's about who's on your list that they know. Who's in your team that isn't doing the business at the moment, but you could get a name from them. See, focusing the energy where you can flow, um, where, the, where that energy can flow into something greater. One person in your business can change everything. One person. You could get 100 people from one person if you just start realizing that you, your belief system is holding you back. Uh, what, how are your priorities? Like, what is your, how are you setting your priorities in the day? Are you letting the day get away from you? Um, you know, the distractions can be all around you because you have kids at home. Are you finding a place for yourself to set your priorities and actually start tackling the day? Have you, do you have a calendar book? Like, do you have a physical calendar book? Because I can tell you as a hairdresser, if I didn't have my appointments in there, I probably, that's it right there. Mine looks just like that. I'm going to grab it. Everybody see my appointment book? Yeah. <laughs> My appointment book. My second too. Bible. Yeah. <laughs> and my notes and my lists. And, you know, they're sitting beside me all the time. And I'm always taking notes. I have a pen and paper. I, they're on all over side of me, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Always, always, you know, and that, you know, that really makes a difference in what you're doing, but your priorities, what's your daily method of operation? That's the, the thing of, that, you know, I know Mr. Dr. Thomas has taught each and every one of you is your daily method of operation. Our system is set up for a daily method of operation. Are you focusing on the three things that make you money? Because there's only three things in ACN that make you money. And there's really only one thing that makes you money and that's talking to people. But through talking to people, they're getting in front of the information, they're becoming a customer, or they're, you're inviting them and, and getting them to an event. And of course, right now it's a Zoom event, whether it's a weekly event, moving, moving through your business building from event to event, right into Saturday, so they're trained. Um, daily method of operation, stay off your back office. It doesn't change that much. 
<laughs> right? Um, if, if you're spending time on your back office, maybe it's in a train, maybe it's a training. That's great. But sometimes you get trained too much and you're not, you're not actually applying all the training. And I know that was something we, we covered on Wednesday at Ask Al. <laughs> I, I love that Wednesday at Ask Al. Um, and again, being a solutionist, are you a problem solver? See, the more, problem, more problems you have, embrace them because that means you're, you are uh, becoming a leader, but you, are you solving them? Are you finding a solution? Are you, be, are you available to um, elevate yourself? Meaning, you know, I can tell you, I've been getting calls and, and um, asked just like Mr. Thomas, so grateful and honored to be on these calls. Um, you know, I shift things around to make things happen. I'll tell you, uh, Miss Natasha Ismail had something in place yesterday and I last minute asked her if she wanted to be on a call with me and give a testimony and she moved, she found a solution. She didn't, she didn't, um, cancel anything she just moved it around to make it work because at every moment every turn there is um there is a next level for you but you have to find find solutions you know there's things that happen in all of our days um and i make sure that you know i'm available for my business when i when i have my business time set that's when i'm working business okay so you know really putting your priorities straight uh are you regularly talking to your coaches? Like you should have one, two coaches. Not everybody should be coaching you. And there's many different things like talk about your circle, about your board of directors. Who's on your board of directors? Who do you, who do you go to for business, for spiritual life, for, for personal life? Who do, do you have that core group of people? And are you reaching out to them? See, I was listening to a um, uh, message by T.D. Jakes this morning called Bother Me. What I, what I have seen and what he was speaking of is that we, we think that we're bothering, bothering the coach by calling them when that actual call could have shifted you and taken to you to the next level. But because you're, you're feeling embarrassed or you're not doing what you're supposed to do uh, for you, like we're not here to tell you what to do and what you should have. You set the goals. We coach you through the goals. Um, but I realize people stop in a place when they got, when they don't do what they, what they've set out to do for the week. I can tell you a lot of people are not accountable to that coaching call and to that coach to help them to the next step. That's where you miss it. Then you let another week go by and another week go by. And then you finally reach out and you've lost two weeks. And that's, you know, a coach will change that for you. They're not there to scold you. They're not there to tell you what you're doing wrong. They're there to help you over the obstacle. And you just missed it because you didn't step into it. See, I'm, I'm going to um, challenge all of you to step into having a coach that helps you be accountable. Don't, don't get coaches that are easy on you. It'll never take you to the next level. They got to be tough on you. They got to help you get over that next obstacle so you can rise beyond and never go back to that particular thing that you keep going back to. So that I talk about that. You know, how do you respect your coach? You know, obviously respecting their time, but it's not about bothering them. I think that's one of the biggest mistakes I made in the beginning was that I felt like I might be bothering them. You no, know, if you're, if you are intentional, and you really want something to be different, that coach is there to help you because guess what? They've been there. I think that's another thing that a lot of people forget is you see the success in Mr. Thomas. You see where he is today. What did it take for him to get there? It took him to go beyond and stretch and push and pull and and tug at his own brain and, and get the right coaches and mentors around him, surround him with the right board of directors that, that really pushed him to that next level. It was not easy for Mr. Thomas to get to where he is today. So I don't, I, what, what I uh, experience sometimes is people saying, well, you have this and you're here and you have, I, I wish I had more time like you do. Well, there was a point where I was a single mom raising my daughter on my, my own. People stop forgetting that we were already once there and we're still going through our next steps. We just don't talk about our problems. We don't talk about our, we don't, we don't go into the excuses. Stop 
excusing yourself from things that are not reality because you have the answer to get on the other side of it. And that, I want Mr. Thomas to say, I know he wants to speak. You want to say something? No, that, that's a good point. You know, I, I, I'm going to back up a little bit and I'm taking my, taking notes. I, I got all the notes. Ever since you've been doing our calls, I got a lot, all your notes, trust me. <laughs> and it's so important it. to take notes, everybody. But you said something I want to kind of go back to, having a coach that's, that's hard on you. And I think we live in a world now that we're so uh, like toothpicks or, or fragile. You say something, ooh, it hurts people's feelings so much. And like you said, a coach is there to, 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 to guide you. I remember when I was coming up, I had three billionaire mentors. I'd have five, six, seven, eight, three billionaires. That's all I listened to. Three. Because they, they, were, they were where I wanted to be. They were, big, they were billionaires. Now, God thought, I had thought either I was stupid or he thought I was hard-headed, but he gave me not one, not two, but he gave me three. So that, that's a sign right there. But I listened to him, and I'm still leading off, and I'm, I'm sure my organization heard me say this, I'm still leading off the nuggets of wisdom, wisdom, like Solomon, wisdom, even to this day. And I'm still leading off that wisdom. And I think a lot of times we hear something from a coach and we, we I don't want to do this. Or we're going to what I call the three R's, resentment, revenge, or resistance of what they said. Because I want to do the Frank Sinatra way, my way. What do you think, who do you think they are? And instead of being open enough to be receptive, and I go back to about a week ago when Mr. Tasha Ismail was talking about all the leaders on the call should have shirts with collars. And I figured, uh-oh, she's talking to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and from that moment on, I got it. You know, you see... And we were laughing about that this morning. I said, well, I was in a t-shirt. I took my walk this morning. I had a little shirt without a collar. And I talked to her like 10 minutes before the call came on. She said, what are you doing? I said, I got I to go. I got to change. I got to put my shirt on with a collar. And then I get on here. I see the handsome Mr. Brian Baker with a blue shirt like mine with a shirt with a collar. Because <laughs> last week he had a t-shirt on. This week he got a shirt with a collar. You see what I'm saying? So leaders are, are receptive to listen to leaders who are trying to mold them to be that kind of person. Without me saying a word, you know, he, today he get on, I'm laughing. I said, here's Mr. Uh, first thing I said in my mouth when I saw Mr. Baker, I said, you got a trip with a collar. Wow, because it trickles down, folks. It trickles down. So go continue on. I just want to bring that point out. Coaches, are, they're, they're going to be hard on you, not to be lovey. No, love it. Keep, continue on. So, yeah, that I mean, that's, you know, as uncomfortable as it gets, that's the point. You need to get uncomfortable. And a coach is there to get you uncomfortable. And if you just come back with excuses of why this and why that, you know, that's when you are bothering a coach is when you continue with your excuses that have held you right where you are. See, your coach is not a, trying to offend you. Stop being offended. It's only an offense if you take it as an offense. No one can take your joy. No one can steal your peace unless you give it away. So if you really want to get to the next level, you have to respect the coach that you're, you're accountable to and knowing that they have your best interest. They have your back. They're not there to do anything but to help you elevate to the next level. So, you know, how do you respect your coach? Stop hiding. That's another note I took because I know when someone goes silent, they're going back into that old space of darkness and poor me. And, you know, I didn't do this, that this week. See, who are you being? Because it is who you are being that you're attracting. So if you're not getting the, the people that um, are coming to the forefront or on your list that you want to get started in your business, you have to evaluate who you're being that is that's so very, critical go ahead that's a very good point one of my one of my things with my team is sometimes i'll give you an idea everybody i talk whenever you get a new ibo in text me their name and cell number it's like i have to go over it again and it's like beating people up on the head it's like it's so simple to do and it's like why why do i ask people to do that and the reason why i ask people to do that, that that way i can send them out a daily text message to remind them because until they become strong and people look at it, well, those are my people. So you guys are looking at it the wrong way. We're here to help you build an empire, but they're, they're new babies are babies. They need to get something positive in their mind every single day. That's why I send a text message every morning, something positive in a negative, darkened world. Mm -hmm. Like this morning, when I talked about Ms. Giles and Drills is going to be on the call, I sent a picture of Hawaii. <laughs> Why? Something uplifting, like, oh, and I got like seven people to, oh my God, I can't wait. It's just, it's, it's, it's up here, folks. There's a reason why I say text me your new people, name and cell number. 
today I remind them about Miss Giles and Drizzle being on, with a picture of Hawaii in the background. And seven people responded. That's why I do it, to help you build a business on things that you don't understand yet. Back to you, Ms. Driscoll. You're speaking life about Hawaii into my life. I'm going to go to Hawaii. <laughs> I love it. There's sands and beaches and right and palm trees and a pina colada. That sounds good. <laughs> I, was just there, I was just there in March. And here's the funny part. I flew over there in March just for the, I, my group and I had a contest going. And, uh, you know, it, long story short, not to say anybody's name. But I ended up going for the weekend. I flew over there first class for the weekend, touched the beach, hung out, had a picnic collided to jump on the jet and headed back just for the weekend. Beautiful. Beautiful. And he, as, he, as he shares that, you can see his face light up because of the life that he has. He is not money motivated. He is freedom driven. And that is all a coach here in ACN is all about to help you get there. So, you know, it's so important that you listen to what we're saying and apply it. It's, it's applicable to each and every single one of you. So who are you being? Stop hiding in the background. You're not, you were not created to hide. If you want to attract people who are in the forefront and who will respect you, you got to get yourself out there no, no matter how hard it is. I understand this, you guys. I understand this so well um, to put yourself out there it can be you're vulnerable you're um you know you're not sure how you're going to be received stop the greatest two words you can say to yourself in the morning is i am what are you i am great i am beautiful i am strong i am courageous i can do all things through his strength that's how I look at it. But I am, if you say that to yourself, speak life over to your, over yourself. Don't just allow us to speak life over you. You got to speak life over you so that it trickles out and you're speaking life over everybody else. That's really important. Um, what else did I write, write down here? I wrote so many things. The system is so perfect that we have. Are you, are you working outside of the system or are you working the system? Because the system is the key to this business, you know, to have your breakthroughs, to change habits. Um, if you just follow the system, you'll break some old bad habits. <laughs> I know everybody has, I want you all to write down one habit that you need to break this week. Mm. Right. And create a new habit. So I want you to write down one bad habit to change and one great habit to implement. What do you see in a coach that you're working with that has something that uh, maybe they've coached you and has caused them to change and you haven't implemented that in your uh, daily life? That would be a great habit for you to implement. Um, oh, oh, I got an idea. Okay. What is it? Uh, Ms. Pearl of a knowledge text, bad habit is called, her, hers is following up on people. While we open the phone lines up, this is a great part where we can open it up and find out what some of the habits people need to break and okay. then tell us one that you need to implement. Let's do that right now. Okay. Awesome. Open it up, guys. Unmute. Tell us a bad habit you have that you're going to change this week and that you're, because it takes at least 21 days to change a bad habit, at least 21 days to create a new habit that will um, sit with you, whether it's working out, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things, you know, your spiritual life, um, one thing that you're going to change in your, because something in your spiritual life, something in your personal life will actually elevate your business life if you change the habit. So who do we have? If anyone needs to be unmuted, just. We're not hearing you. Raise Mr. Ismail. And will unmute. That's feeling sorry for himself. Okay. So what are you going to replace that with, sir? Mr. Thomas, everyone is able to unmute themselves. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bree Clemens. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for your prayers, Mr. Bree Clemens. He had, a, he had a migraine yesterday, and the lights were out in Nashville, and had passed everything to me. You know, I'm not a techie, but we want to thank you, sir. And I want to thank you, everybody that uh, prayed for Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Bree Clemens yesterday. Thank you, because prayers do work. Thank you, because we're a family. Yes. I, I would replace my feel sorry for myself to uh, look at, uh, remember the good things that you have accomplished in your life. 
great. That's Thank awesome. You. Yes. Yeah. So basically you're saying to be grateful for the things that you've already co completed and done yes. in your life. Yes. So gr a grateful spirit will get you a long way. So that's a great one to do. Yes. Stop. I, I, over you, stop feeling sorry for yourself. We all have life happen to us in many different ways. And when we hold on to that, we're holding on to, um, Gosh, we're just holding on to things that, that aren't real anymore, that aren't real over our life. And we need to listen to the right voice. So that's great. Miss Luana, uh, depressed and overwhelmed. Who are we talking to? Miss Luana, I want you guys to do this. You could text them, but better yet, why don't you just unmute yes. your phone and speak it so we can all enjoy it. Yeah, if you speak it, you can change it. Luann? Yes. Speak it. Okay. Um, Beautiful Luann. <laughs> Love her. Well, I think, thank you. Um, being overwhelmed um, with, you know, personal situations that I'm going through uh, and depressed, uh, things I can't control. And I know that it's in God's hands, but it's accepting whatever happens and um being able to deal with it great I have, so I have so i will speak to that. i will speak to that in just a second what are you going to replace it with well i've been reading proverbs every day and i learned that from my mentor uh mr thomas and um proverb a day keeps the doctor yes. away. amen um <coughs> Perhaps um, more positive quotes, more positive, like the I am, I like that. I am beautiful. I am uh, forgiven. I am uh, God's child. I am, you know, so. I feel your heart, Luann. I, I hear you. You're go you're, there's a shift coming for you. I feel it because you're speaking it. Um. <laughs> I didn't want to speak. It's okay. Speak. I didn't want to speak. Because you don't want anybody to know that you have problems. We all have problems. And you we know, all have problems. Yeah, we all have problems, Luann. And that's the one thing that we forget is that we're human. This world is not perfect and neither, n none of us are perfect. And we all have life happen to us. And we all have family members that, um, you know, we're hoping to guide and direct and they, you know, there's, they're astray. And, um, you know, there's so many things that we all go through. And if you don't speak it, you can't change it. And we're, you're safe here, Luann, you're safe um, in, in with us and sharing and I know that you speaking it will start changing it and you're starting with the right things proverb a day speaking life over yourself knowing you are beautiful you are strong you are courageous um, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength and that's not a cliche it's the truth and what I forget sometimes what we forget sometimes is to surrender it all because you have mm -hmm. to let it go you have to let these things go that you have no control over because when you finally let go, I look at it as, you know, I have the wheel, right? I'm taking the wheel uh -huh. and I, I have this grip on the wheel and I'm trying to control it. I'm trying to keep it from skidding off the road or flipping over or whatever. And when I take the hands off the wheel, I see God taking the wheel and he can actually direct it in the right direction for us we're actually going in the wrong direction that that's why we're spinning out that's why we we can't handle it that's why we're overwhelmed that's why we get depressed is because it's so much that we're trying to hold on to let it go you know my my uh chapter in my book that i wrote is called let go let god and that is a, a huge key i implemented a huge uh, power for me that i implemented in my life and i truly surrendered what i can't control in this world to him and I just do what I can do I do what I can do the strength he's given me to take one foot and put it in front of the other and as hard as it is to you know see somebody spinning out 
you know, you have to put it back in his hands. Like we, st- he, I think sometimes Jesus is saying, stop taking my job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're trying to play Jesus and God and we're not, we can't, we have to get to him as much as it hurts us to see somebody making the wrong choices, the wrong decisions, going the wrong path. It's not always, we just need, you know, I have a brother, I'm going to share it with you guys. I have a brother who has fought addiction all his life off and on. He has a beautiful son who's eight, uh, 20 something now, um, you know, and he continues to spin out and it's been a, a, a battle for 40 plus years, you guys. A lot of people don't know that. And my mom has been the prayer warrior and I, to watch the grace in her, to see her continue as hard as it is to be a mom that has a drug addicted son and can't seem to control his life um, and, and take old yet. She has two kids that do and one that just can't do it, you know? And I, I stand in the middle. I stand in the gap with her to pray for her, pray for our family. And as hard as it is to turn my brother away and to fight for my mom and, and what she deserves in her life today, after 40 plus years, trying to get him back on track, help him get back on track. We finally have let God continue to, and for some reason, my prayer is always, Lord, let him step, let them, there be someone that stands in his path that will, he'll actually hear your voice because we can't do it anymore. We are not the ones we are. And as hard as it is to turn my brother away, you have to, you have to let it go and let him take the wheel because he has the power. We don't have that power. That's why you get depressed. That's why you get anxiety. That's why you go into why me, poor me, right? I, I mean, I can do the same thing in many different areas of my life and I just have to let it go. So I, I, right. I give it to you to let it go, uh, Luann, and I'm going to pray over that for you. Thank you. Thank you for you sharing. You know, I, I have a brother the same way. I didn't, I see Miss Driscoll. I didn't know that she had a brother. I have my, I have a brother the same way. But you know what, guys? You never hear me talk about it. You know why? It's, it's, in, it's in his hands. We try to hold on to everything. Why are you trying to control stuff that's out of your control? When I was going through a divorce, I tell you what, it was, you know, talking about a strain on you. I said, God, this is your problem. You said in your word, you'll never give me more than I can handle. You take it. You take it. And I, you take it. And guess what? I came out of it because I gave it to him. I couldn't, I couldn't, that was a battle. I cannot, no, you said it. You know, I'm, no, you take it. And the reason why I say this is because we all go through things. I had no idea about her brother. You had no idea about my brother. But it's, I can't say it's not important. We just give it over to, to him and let him deal with it. We got to keep on going for the living and to put food on the table for the loved ones that we have and to continue to bless our ACM family and our extended family. And be it's the, the same example. Thing, and be the oh, example. You can't, you can't take it in because it's not your responsibility to take it in. That is right out of the pit of hell. Excuse my French. Yeah. And, and the reason why I wanted everybody to unmute your phone and talk about it, not just text me, because I guarantee you for what Miss Luann said, there's four or five others are going through the same situation. So I want, we wanted Ms. Giles, I want to make it more personal because you want to understand that there's other people have the same thing on this call. They need to have the courage to come forward with it. Mm-hmm. And we are trying to let you understand it's more personal. And by talking about it, it touches so many other people like, wow, that's me too. Ooh, that's me too. Yeah. And that's what we need, especially in today's new brave world that we're in i have so many things i could share that have that i have let go and let god do take over whether it was in my personal life divorce choosing the wrong men in my life you know i know men have choose the, chosen the wrong women in their life you know there's a lot so many things that we could talk about and i'm i'm open to talk about those things but i just want i mr thomas is so right speaking it so that we can actually do something about it. And that's when you'll take your next shift because we hold on, when we hold on, we can't get, we can't go forward. We're holding on to the past and it keeps us in the present and we need to go to the future. I wanna share a quick story that Pastor uh, Kevin Boyd said uh, at one of the conventions and he also said in church several times about an eagle. This eagle had came down and grabbed this animal off the ground and took it up in the air. And about four or five minutes later, the eagle fell straight to his death. And the reason why he fell straight to his death, everybody was curious, why did the eagle pick up this, whatever it was, 
and then he, he's dead five minutes later. He picked up a bow weevil. And instead of let, let it go, let it go, let it go, the bow weevil was climbing, it was clawing through his chest with his claws right to his heart, and he died. He could have let it go, but he held on to it. And so many times in life, God is telling you, let go. The first pain, let it go. Because that bow weevil is going to kill you by you keep holding on to that. Let it go. And you don't try to control things. Let it go. Go ahead. Yeah, I thought and, that was a great analogy. You know, I remember that so very well because it, it, it really truly hit me too um, about how we hold on to that. And it just, it chews right into your soul and kills you. Um, you know, not physically, but emotionally it kills you and you can't, you're, you're, you're stuck. We got to get out of stuck guys. We got to get out of stuck. And that is our whole goal here is to help you get out of stuck and move forward into the life that you dream and have envisioned that God has created you to be so much greater than you are today. There is greatness in you, each and every one of you. Um, Mag Magali, is it Mag Magali? Magali, yeah. Magali. <laughs> Hi. I'll answer to anything. It's okay. <laughs> say, the, say your name again. Magali. Magali. That's beautiful. Yes. Um, you wrote, you. bad habit is multitasking. Focus on being present. Yes. I tend to try to do too much at once. And I always debated if it was a bad thing or a good thing. But I figure, you know, I need to start being present in the moment. Um, make sure that what I start, I finish instead of starting something else because then nothing ever gets done. And then just celebrate the small wins along with it because that's kind of what will allow me to get um, <clears throat> excited to move on to the next task. You must always celebrate yourself. So have a party. <laughs> when, you, when you complete something, have a party. Like, I don't know, every day I create, where is my list here? Every day, I don't know, I put it. So I haven't started it today. Every day I create my action list and you can see to, to gain results. So I'll have my list today and I mark them off as I do them. So multitasking is a myth. You cannot truly, women are, are, are better at it than men, but we're still not, we're not created to be a multi, multitasking machine. That, that puts us in a place of, as you just said, we run circles. We do circles. And make mistakes all the time. And then if you're hard on yourself, then you'll never get out of there. So you get caught in that. So you need, perfect. You need to compartmentalize your day, right? And you need to put your priorities in straight, which is what's first, what's second, what's third. And, you know, that calendar that Mr. Thomas and I showed you, having that physical calendar keeps me on track. What am, I have my appointments in my book, whether, you know, I'm focused on what I'm doing this time, this time, this time. And I'm committed to that. Even if I said I'm doing a Zoom appointment at nine o'clock on Monday and it's not with Mr. Thomas, I'm doing a Zoom appointment at nine o'clock on Monday with someone. Does that make sense? So really important that you focus on creating um, what you, so if some of you are working, make sure that's on your calendar. This is when I work. So I'm not doing anything else while I'm working. You focus on that, do it well, get it done. Don't try to make, you know, if you can text somebody to set up an appointment, if it makes sense, you can do that. But I want you to set specific time for your ACN business. So that mm -hmm. your focus goes where your, you know, your energy flows from your focus and you're really creating the right, um, the, well, the right calendar, the right steps in your day so that you can actually um, really know that you've accomplished something in your day. So multitasking does not work. What time have you set aside for your family? See, because it's important that you have that time for your family. And if they're feeling like they're being put in, or in and around something that doesn't work because it's God first, family second, business third, if you're doing it really truly correctly. And it doesn't mean that it's in that order in your day. It's just that you know that you have the time set aside for your family and that you're gonna be present. See, this phone goes away when I'm sitting down with my grandkids. This phone goes away when I'm having lunch and dinner with my husband. This phone is not my distraction. It is my business 
but my phone does not distract me. If I'm doing business, this phone is not anywhere near me. Like I'm doing this, I'm not really looking at my phone. I'm not paying attention what, to what's coming next. I'm focused here with you. So it's oh. so important that this phone that is your business is not your distraction too. So, so you can, what you're okay. saying, Mr. Allison Driscoll, is you run your business, not your business runs you. You know, there's studies after study after study shows that 44% of less production by multitasking, by the way, 44% less. We think we're doing more, but you're losing. You're getting less done. It's like when I see people on the, on the freeway texting and riding and calling. And you're not, you get distracted and have accidents. So 44, write that down, 44% less productive when you try to multitask. That's a and huge like Mr. number. Like Mr. Driscoll said, you got to have time set aside. Like Sunday's my, my non-work day on Sunday. Sunday, I watch Pastor Board at 11 o'clock on, on streaming. That's my pastor. You know, I get up, take my walk in the morning. But I, Sunday's God's day, Sunday's family day. I don't, I don't do too much work on Sunday. I don't. That's, what, that's I don't. what Sunday is to me too. So the only reason I, I did a Zoom on Sunday yesterday was because someone asked me to do them a favor. I did it, but in normal cases, I say no to most things on Sunday. So, Excuse me. What, yes. Could you please define for me what multicasting is? When you're trying to do multiple things at one time. So you, you have uh, mm -hmm. your wife here and your trying to text and create business here and you got something on the stove here and you um, are thinking about who you need to, you know, who you need to handle over here. Like you just got so many things going and you don't have an action list of what I need to do right now. And okay. you're with your, you're with your spouse and you got, you're on your phone. Stop that. It's not a, it's not that you will lose so much more when you do that. You know, I teach my grandkids, if you're sitting at the dinner table with us, there are no devices, no TV, no nothing. Don't teach your kids to multitask because then they get grow into adults trying to multitask and it doesn't work. Okay. It's not effective. Okay. Is that good? Thank you. Yes. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, I, somebody uh, had mentioned yeah. um, get, uh, get better at following up with leads. Yes. The fortune is in the follow through, the follow up. 100%, you hear that over time, it's not cliche either. You have to follow through. So anybody want to, yeah. I think that's Lance, and was that um, Ms. Perla Bernal as well about follow through? We have Brandon that raised his hand. I don't know, Brandon, do you have a yeah. question? You can unmute yourself. I, I, yeah, yeah, um, I just wanted to say some things that I, I will work on, like uh, more is my focus. Of being more organized and disciplined. That's not just with the business, but that's just with life. Period. Because um, man of God first for anything. And I really need to do that more. That's the areas that I struggle in, but I won't struggle in it no more. In Jesus' name, I'm speaking life. In Jesus' um, name. Yep. In Jesus' name. Um, it's like God got to be first, and then everything else will follow for me. And that's my focus. My focus is going to be more on Him. Um, counseling out more of the distractions, being more organized and building my family and showing my kids and being an example. So that's that's what I'm focusing on more. And I'm going to lose off and I'm going to really focus on that. I'm going to allow God to show me and I'll continue to study to show myself approved as the word of God says. So that's the whole thing this business is about, studying and learning it. But we got to really get our priorities straight first because we do have a life to live and we do have to make sure that we have a balance in doing Because, uh, you know, like I say, I'm a believer. I love Jesus. And I believe that anybody that's struggling on here, we all can do, we can, we can do all things through Christ restricting us. Absolutely. We just got to continue to press. We got to continue to press. You got to think about it when oil is made, when the olive, you see an olive tree, and the, we're trying to get the oil out the olive. But sometimes you got to be crushed. You got to be crushed until you get that oil out of you. And it's a process. And That's sometimes you got to enjoy the process. That's good, right? And sometimes yeah. you got to enjoy the process. Yeah. You know, you got to enjoy the journey because there's going to be some tough days. It's going to be some hard days, but we all got to press, you know. And I have my days. Like I say, I'll be honest. That's my, my thing focus, organize, and be a discipline. Awesome.
Awesome. Yeah. So. Crushing, crushing is TD Jake's book and it's an amazing book. If you haven't read it, read it because it's yeah. an amazing book. Um, but yeah, the priorities and truly 24 hours is what we all have. And you wonder why some people do uh, more in their 24 hours than you do. Maybe uh, it's because of their priorities and fixing their focus. Right. So you you're spot on with that. Um, Brandon, and if you can really focus on putting the God first, family second, business third, you will find a whole different life on the other side of that. And um, you will have a better 24 hours and you will find yourself to the next position and the next level when you, when you really truly are um, focused on that. I think we got Dave Colbert next. Dave Colbert. Um. I'm, my biggest thing is right now, I tend to procrastinate more than I, than I do. And I just need to do more follow-up and have urgency and just learn how to trust the process. And um, the, another book by T.D.J. is Let It Go. And I think sometimes- Oh, my good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we, we, ha we, we, got, we, we got to learn how to do that. And more importantly for me is like, embrace the journey of the process. Don't worry about the results because you can't go well. What you can control is what you do and, and learn how to, like, let me know, I look like it's an opportunity to work on you. It's like, it's, yes, great. And just don't be afraid to go out for support. So Absolutely. I've, been a bit, I've, been, I've been guilty of that too. So. <laughs> well, I think all of us are guilty of procrastination and procrastination is the number one killer of dreams and goals. And, um, you know, we can always say, my mom always said, manana, 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 that will kill you. <laughs> You know, so don't be and the money. guarantee money. <laughs> yeah. And we, and a lot of times procrastination just comes from our thoughts. We can be right. sitting and thinking over something and something and something. And an hour has gone by and we missed making a phone call. We missed that person that had been waiting for us because see, God's already prepared the way the way's already prepared. It's whether we're taking that step and we're taking the path and we're actually walking in, in, in faith, right? Not by sight, but, but, but by faith. And, um, we can, we can go, I have a great video on walking by faith, but, um, it's, it's incredible. But I think you saw, did you see Mr. Mr. Nelson posted or shared yes. this video? Yes. That was excellent. And the vo excellent. voices that continue, this world will bring so many voices. So one of the, the things that find the person, there is a person out there for you um, that will actually, this is my mother for me. I can hear the one voice. We all need to hear one voice. Not all these other voices, our spouse, our children, or whatever, that are always da -da 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 -da, right? And we have to drown that out. Mm -hmm. And we need to hear the one voice. Yes. And there's a person in your life that you can actually bring that voice to the forefront when you just hear their voice. So if you need to pick up the phone and call Mr. Nel Mr. Nelson or Mr. Uh, Thomas, obviously, because um, they're so God-centered that... If you just, when you have voices just going like this, pick up the phone and call someone where you can just start centering yourself. Make that a habit. That's a great habit to make. Or listen to TD Jakes or listen to, Absolutely. you know, there'll be something that is spoken to you and you can totally shift your whole day. Get out of, get out of your head. Yeah. Awesome. I love that you shared you. that. Appreciate that you. Definitely, <laughs> definitely a, a thing that we all have to fix. <laughs> Awesome. Anybody else? We're going on an hour again, Mr. Thomas. Are you okay? <laughs> Is yeah. everybody okay? I'm okay. You know, I, I, you know what? There's so much in this today. As, and I think there's a lot of healing power going on right now with people that need it. Because I think so many people are stressed out and taking all this stuff that's out of your control. What goes on out there is out of your control. I don't even worry about it. You know why? Because I know this. I don't worry about it. I see people looking glossy because you know what? First of all, I, I, I'm, I'm anchored. I'm anchored. Okay, I'm anchored. Number two, all Al Thomas control is Al Thomas. I'm going to end this with a story. I'm going to give Ms. Giles and Driscoll a few minutes to close out. This guy was trying to change the world, and, 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 and he was on his deathbed. And he thought about it. He said, gosh, if I only change the people in my country, I could have changed the world. And he thought about it a long, he says, man, if I only change the people in my state, I could have changed the world. And they said, no, 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 no. 
oh my God, I really got it. If I only changed the people in my city, I could have changed the world. And just before he's about ready to die, he says, oh my God, if I only changed the people on my block, I could have changed the world. And just before he took his last breath, he said, oh my God, I really got it. If I only changed me, I could have changed the world. And everything out there, does, it's all about you, how you see it. Don't let that affect you. It's how you see it. And that's how you change your world. You can't change anybody, but who? I don't worry about that mess out there. I can't control it. So why are you letting it control you? And that's why I thank Ms. God for Ms. Giles and Drissel, a spiritual based woman who understands you guys let it go. And I thank her, I thank God for her for this call today because she has touched more lives spiritually today. Get your spirit life together, get you together as a person, because you can't build something if you're torn up on the inside. You gotta let the, you know, one of the books, Let It Go, uh, Let It Go by TJX. I sent that 10 people yes, uh, uh, last week. Let it go. It's not, you can't control something you can't control. All I can control is what's going on in here in my house. So closing words, Miss Giles and Durstall, and maybe we can get her back next Monday to do another part. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm all Yay! in. <laughs> if it has anything to do with you, Mr. Thomas, and this, your amazing leaders, I'm all in. So Got to put it in my book. <laughs> um, is there room for Edmund Smith to say something? He raised his hand. Absolutely. Mr. Edmund Smith. Morning. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I am phenomenal. I'm, I'm just getting out of the gym. Okay. So um, one, of my, one of my greatest habits I need to reestablish the discipline of, and that is uh, finishing tomorrow today on paper. I'll wake up with like, I know what I'm doing. I'll do it, but I can certainly be way more effective when I write it down as uh, Habakkuk 2 and 2, write it down and make it plain on the table. So uh, th that's my greatest, my greatest one thing that I can do to be far more effective. That's awesome. Discipline of, I of love it. On paper. I speak life into that with you. <laughs> I it. We touch an agreement. Fantastic, yes. Hey, if we all stand together in agreement on these things, we can all be just rise better, right? Together we rise. So Amen. thank you for that. I appreciate the share. Um, you know, just to, to uh, close this out, to, to tag team with Mr. Thomas, which is, uh, you know, one of my sayings is, I can't stop worrying about the White House, worry about your house. Mm. <laughs> you know, it goes right back to that. It, we can change the world one person at a time, and it starts with us. It's really the truth. There's nothing more to say. I guess we can just drop, drop the mic there <laughs> because it, it, <laughs> it really is. Start with you. Start with uh, changing you because when you have you right, then you can change the, help change the next person. You won't change anybody. You can only be an example for others to change. And if you don't take on the weight of changing the world and I, I want to be the change in the world, but I also know I don't put that weight on my shoulders is that um, I'm taking on the world myself. No, I'm changing me. I'm creating a better life for my family and being an example. And I won't stop until I'm there, which is when I'm in the grave. <laughs> so you, this Amen. girl, this girl's not stopping. I'm going to tell you, this girl is 100% uh, ACN uh, driven family. This, I, you will never see me in any other place but here. I know where I'm going. I know who I am. I know whose I am. And I am that change. But it started here. I had to start here. So worry about your house and who you are being so that you can help the next person do the same. And with one person at a time, we will change the world. And you know what, everybody, to piggyback off that, if everyone on your, on this call would do the same thing she's saying, be an ASIN for life, be there for life, be that strength, be that anchor, be that bullion, be that, be that rock for, that, for, your, for yourself and your family. Be that rock for people that need you in your organization. Be that rock. You heard the story about the lighthouse arguing with the ship and the ship didn't know it was a, it was a lighthouse he was arguing with. 
<laughs> until it got closer. No, be that rock. So thank you all for today. What a wonderful call. This is being recorded. Mr. Bree Clemens will have it posted in, in, in about 20, 30, 40 minutes, depending upon what he's got going on. Just to interrupt, tomorrow morning, we got Mr. Dwight, uh, Dwight uh, Williams will be from Fred, uh, Houston, who was on there last week. Powerful, powerful man. I want you guys to hear from a business business person. And every Tuesday, don't forget, every every morning, 9 o'clock, we're here every morning, Monday through Friday, 9 o'clock, uh, Tuesday, Thursday at 6 and then training right after the fast start at 6.30. Friday night, right? because I'm, I'm not posting this, but Friday night, it's called Ask Al Hour. It's called Happy Hour to Al. Miss Dows, Drows, and Drizzle, write that down. I know you got to be on another call, but when you get off, but we usually, last time we were on the hour and a half. So Friday night at 6 o'clock, bring your libation. It's our happy hour. It's called Ask Al's Happy Hour. And we had a great, great happy hour this last Friday night. And then at 6 o'clock, on Sunday, uh, Saturday is training leadership, and then six o'clock on Sunday it is also a product training. So God bless. Can we give Miss Giles a drill? Show how much we love her. Come on, y'all. Show how much we love her. My God, that was powerful. And I think she, I think she touched so many hearts today and pierced so many hearts, and give you guys not just ACM, but give you a, a foundation to lift yourself up, lift your spirits up, let this other stuff go, and continue on down the journey that God sent you on. So we thank you, Miss Giles Dressel. You are a godsend. Man, I love you in the bottom of my heart. I don't say the bottom of my heart. I love you in the top of my heart because you just touched so many people today that we cannot even start to understand the blessings of what's going to come out this week and be bold while you go out there and backbone as you talk to people because after this call was amazing. So God bless everybody. We'll have her back next Monday. See everybody tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock again. God bless. Have a great afternoon, a great day. If you need me, call me. God bless. God bless. God bless. God bless.